Hey guys, it's Liv here, and in today's video, we're gonna be ranking every grass type Pokemon in competitive. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. If you do and you want to see some more content like this, of course, like and subscribe and answer the comment question of the day. What is your favorite grass type to use in competitive? Uh, this generation is pretty tough, but if I had to pick, I would probably say Lilligan. I think Lilligan's up there. Uh, Meowskarata is as well, actually. I think it's really fun. It's just really hard to fit on teams. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I know my answer. It's Bomb Snow. It's obviously a Bomb Snow. Uh, but let me know your guys' thoughts down below on some of your favorite grass types to use. And with that said, let's get started with the tiers. So the S plus tier is going to be where we're going to start today. Uh, this will be with Pokemon that are so good that you actually hurt your team not running these unless you're running them for another S plus instead. Uh, for example, if we were to compare, like if, you're, if your last team slot, let's say, was between like, I don't know, uh, Fluttermane or like Chiyu. And I, and I say that specifically knowing that Fluttermane and Chiyu is a really good core together. But if you could only fit one of them on a team and they both offered you pretty similar synergy, I mean, you wouldn't really be losing merit in that regard. However, if you were picking between like, let's say, uh, Fluttermane versus a Mismagius, or actually I'm trying to think of a less egregious example than that. Uh, why not? Uh, I'm trying to think. Again, it's really hard to just think of these examples off rip um, because everything that I can mention would be really. Oh, you know what? Iron Hands versus uh, Iron Hands in Series 2 versus Haryama in Series 2. That's the best example I could think of where Haryama is still a fairly viable Pokemon, but Iron Hands is just so much better and it's so amazingly splashable that you would lose merit doing that. Uh, so that's probably the best example I can give for an S plus difference uh, as far as like why the the merit is really there these are the pokemon that like they're just that good uh the s tiers can be for pokemon that are still pretty good on the team but you're, you're at least able to still function without these uh you'll see them on pretty on a fairly common occurrence i should say i was gonna say pretty much every team but that's more so the s pluses uh but you'll see these usually like i hit like a bunch of times in ladder uh you will probably be fitting these on a majority of your teams as well they're very splashable usually very diverse pokemon as well the a tier is gonna be for pokemon that of course are still fairly good uh you should still definitely have counterplay for these on all your teams and at least expect these to be coming in games they're probably gonna be coming to a handful of matches every time and yeah, they're, they're just really good mods. B tiers are going to be where you could start maybe not prepping for these, but you should at least know how to get around these Pokemon. Uh, this might be something that you will see like a couple times per laddering session, but it's going to come up enough to where you should have experienced playing around it. C tiers are going to be for mods that are so niche, but they're typically going to be used to counter the S's and the S plus tiers. Uh, so that gives them some merit, or maybe they're going to hand, handle like a majority of the A tier or something. Some collection of Pokemon that makes them noteworthy enough to use, but they're really just anti meta at best d tiers for pokemon that you might see me cover in a video but they're overall pretty garbage i might hype them up a little bit though because that's the youtuber meta and the f tiers are gonna be for pokemon that are so bad that usually i will not even touch these unless if it's for the sake of using them so with that said let's get started on the first one and as far as our first one goes i actually forgot to do the rcs typically uh but that's for good reason actually in this case uh this Arceus is definitely one of, if not the weakest Arceus forms in the entire game, I would argue. I would personally say this format, it is probably actually the second worst. I think that in this generation specifically, Ice is actually a little bit better. And really the only Arceus form I would probably say is definitively worse would be Bug. And then it's probably tiered around stuff like Rock, which I think that, again, the difference being is that despite Rock being a worse type, I think that Rock, unlike Grass, at least has merit in the fact that it's a 100% accurate, high base power Rock move. And, and that goes for a lot of the other shit types too, like Poison, for example. Uh, yeah, Poison's typically not that great. However, it is an Arceus form that cannot get toxic, and it does have a lot of use through recovery that way. Uh, that's a lot of what these other really niche Arceus forms have. Uh, but Grass doesn't really offer anything. It's, it's a kind of lower end type to begin with as far as a pure typing for an Arceus goes. Uh, and on top of that as well, it also then proceeds to not really have a unique gimmick going for it. So I personally actually think this is the second worst RCS. However, I still think it's enough to get in the S tier. It's just not as clear cut of a, as compared to a lot of the other ones. And truthfully, I think we haven't had an RCS that's this contentious for that S tier spot since Bug. Uh, so that's for good reason, obviously. I think that truthfully, it's going to be the worst S tier that we're going to have today. Uh, there's not really a lot of other mods that will not only reach S tier, but then also proceed to be worse than Arceus. Uh, so yeah, Arceus, it's not terrible this generation, but I'd be lying if I said that it was a really strong S tier. Uh, despite the fact that it has 120 stats, it has amazing coverage, it has stuff like Dragon Dance's format, Grass is definitely one of, if not the worst types to abuse any of the buffs that Arceus actually proceeded to get, uh, because not only do we have this collection of things that Arceus just doesn't really do that well, uh, but on top of that as well, Arceus also then proceeds to 
miss out in a lot of areas. Stuff like, for example, Arceus's physical coverage for grass isn't really that great. If we look into its move pool, for example, and we pull up its grass physical options, uh, this proceeds. Oh, sorry, I typed in grass. Uh, now I typed in grass, not oopsies. Um, okay, so so Arceus's physical grass options—they're literally just bullet seed and trailblaze. Uh, you can't even like judgment around that. So stuff like sword dance, dragon dance, Arceus, etc.—they don't really benefit from that. Uh, Combine's probably your best set anyway. That would be completely honest for most Arceus types. But even still, uh, grass doesn't offer that great coverage. Uh, you would probably need to go with, I guess trying to think of what grass doesn't hit so it'd be stuff like fire probably like grass ground would be your best bet and then maybe like uh like recover well that's the thing actually uh because you can't actually get a really good coverage that would not only cover stuff like fire but also stuff like flying i mean your best bet might ironically be like ancient power for special coverage um but even still that misses out then on like steel types so it's really just a give and take is the difference with rc's grass so i think it's definitely a weak s tier uh, electrode electrode's a pretty solid one actually i think this is a c tier um i figure where i put this on electric but i've come around on electrode in general uh it's a pretty strong option for sure with the 150 speed the fact that it has coverage like rotomo uh normally i'm not a huge fan of rotomo of uh, rotomo which i'll get into that in a little bit actually i think rotomo is actually slightly worse considering the fact that despite the fact that electrode is a little bit weaker offensively it doesn't really actually matter in my opinion when we start comparing with the level 50 stats of Electrode versus Rotom, uh, Timid Rotom still underpaces severely for even like a low speed of Electrode. In fact, with zero speed investment alone, Electrode Hisuian form already outpaces Rotom by 19 points. Rotom hits 151 at max speed Timid, meanwhile Hisuian Electrode with zero investment hits 170. I could unironically probably go with a minus speed nature and still outpace. Yep, I can actually by two points. I hit 153 with the minus speed nature. Uh, so just to put into perspective, uh, now obviously this does mean that I can go with modest electrode. And we start comparing modest electrode max investment versus Rotom. It's not too much of a difference. It's only a 12 point difference. And the thing is though, is I could start throwing on items to accommodate for this. On top of this, I also have a lot better uh abilities considering i have stuff like aftermath soundproof and static and i would argue all three of these have like kind of merit though static is definitely static and aftermath are definitely the leagues above soundproof but again that has some merit uh for example you could maybe use Statera around stuff like uh throat spray or hyper voice bonds really it's it's mostly just sylveon and tox though so neither are that great i would probably just go with static or aftermath unless you're playing unless we get some other like series six uh format from sword and shield where it's only like the lower usage mods most of that comes back we're probably not gonna really see a tox viable format but uh regardless so i do think this mod is pseudo viable uh it has some cool utility obviously terra blast is great if, and the difference being between this and regular electrode is the fact this naturally has grass typing so you actually go even further with your terra type and maybe go for something like an ice for example uh, or you can maybe go for something like a fire, and I think those would be pretty good. Definitely a solid mod. I think this is definitely a C tier, and it's a pretty decent one at that. Moving on, we do have Jump Bluff. Uh, now, this is probably going to be one of, if not our best C tiers of the day. Uh, Jump Bluff is pretty good. It has some really amazing support with stuff like Tailwind, for example. Uh, you also can get some options like Leech Seed and essentially make this into a budget Wochan. On top of this as well, for the manual Tailwinders, it's up there as far as speed goes. Uh, really, the only Tailwinders that don't go for uh if, if we disregard like actual prank search priority it's town flame kilowattral noivern rcs roaring moon and then jump bluff like it's in the top five and that includes rcs which we'll probably never actually see a legal vgc vgc format truthfully and i would definitely say it's better as far as utility goes than noivern and kilowattral just because the fact that leeching support is pretty good as well as the fact that you have stuff like encore in your move set which can actually offer a lot to your team and strength sap they can continue to drop your opponent's attack as well which is an amazing form of recovery in this format because of how physically cleaning it is definitely a c tier for sure some flora gets a d tier uh this is actually a kind of strong youtuber mod i would argue uh some flora is a really good jerkin fat i've been messing around with this actually in the ladder and i finally have cracked the sun flora team for series three so you guys will be seeing that most likely next week uh but some flora is a demon this thing unironically in trick room is actually kind of a menace and you can destroy teams with it pretty easily uh typically it was used on my build in series two as a method around size spam trick room teams where i could then proceed to start going for like terror ground and then just start messing Messing with them that way or maybe even like a terra grass or well not terra grass like a terra ice or like a terra fairy point being is i had a lot of options and with stuff like terra fairy for example for Roaring moon terra ice could be useful for terra grass arm rouge uh you tear ground for pre-terra because they typically didn't actually tear against the some floor builds the point being is you had a lot of different options and i think that some floor unironically is still kind of viable as a trick room option definitely a d tier 
Breloom can get a B tier. Uh, this is a pretty fast Spore option, which is good. Among the Grass types, it's actually a pretty strong one. Uh, you have priority for stuff like Chien Pao and Chi Yu as well with Mock Punch. You have uh, options with like some Focus Punch and Poison Heal, uh, which I would say those are probably whatever. Technician's definitely your better build. And with the Loaded Dice, you can actually become a pretty decent Tailwind Threat with like Bullet Seed with Technician as well as then Mock Punch, Rock Team, and Spore. Wouldn't really fit Protect on this mod unless you're going with a Poison Heal set just because I think it has a lot of 4 boost slot syndrome, but it's still objectively a really good threat nonetheless. I definitely think it's a solid B tier. Cacturn sucks. Um, really, the biggest benefit this thing has, truthfully, is the fact that it has actual priority. Um, I heard someone actually recently say, I forget who it was, but someone recently said, I think it was, this might have been Mastodon, uh, when he was streaming the Sydney Regionals casting, uh, but I could have sworn I, I heard someone recently say that they thought Cacturn was one of the worst mods. I still don't think it's that bad, but it's, I, I don't even know if it's like the worst grass type, but I'd be lying if I said it was a really impressive Pokemon. I mean, 40 base, uh, not 40, 55 base speed sucks for both Trick Room and Tailwind. The fact is, well, this thing has not great offensive options, nothing really high base power outside of Leaf Storm and Focus Blast, and everything else that's high base power is either normal type or it's just yeah it's really just those uh it's not really a great mon objectively at neft tier. tropius gets a d tier as well uh, this thing has some pretty unrivaled support it's essentially like a budget wochan but you throw wide guard on it which is kind of cool uh you have stuff like leech seed you have wide guard as i said uh you have harvest for recovery as well and that pops pretty frequently on tropius because of how bulky it is uh with something like a terra water or like a terra flying build or even like a terra steel build you can get a lot of mileage out of this one i definitely think it's something that can be explored for the series and i'm curious to see if someone can make it work because i do actually think it has potential in series three uh but obviously again wochan is probably just a better option than this uh but it has again it's like wochan with slightly different support uh so definitely a d tier a bomb can get a solid b tier this is going to be one of our higher b tiers uh the aurora veil support this thing provides for setup options is pretty strong as well as the fact that this is also just a really good offensive mod on its own uh stuff like life Orb three attacks to protect you have stuff like assault vest builds that are pretty good uh typically you're running terra water on a bomb snow but it's honestly fine you almost never need to click it unless you're fighting a really strong sun team and even still you don't usually need to click it against Sun, truthfully, because your goal is to kill Sun first and then bring in a Bomb Snow, or bring in a Bomb Snow on the turn that you can guarantee kill your opponent's Sun options. Regardless, though, a Bomb Snow is definitely a strong B tier. I'm looking forward to seeing how a Bomb Snow can be optimized further in Series in, uh, series 3, because I do think that it is overall a really strong option, actually, and I'm curious to see what other uh, Bomb Snow teams can come in this format, because personally, I value it a lot. I think it does so much against a lot of the top tiers. Definite B tier. Uh, Levion gets an F tier. This thing kind of sucks, but we'll give it high F tier just because the fact that if nothing else, Leafeon, I guess, has chlorophyll and that's something, but we have better chlorophyll options going down the line. Rotom Mo can get a C tier. I'm actually putting this right below Hisuian Electrode. Uh, one benefit I'll give this thing is the fact that it's a built in ground immunity, which, weirdly enough, I never thought I'd praise Rotom Mo for because it doesn't usually need it. Uh, but I guess it does kind of matter in the sense that we're now finally in a Fisher metagame. And that's actually kind of a useful thing to have. Uh, it's an okay mon and rain. I would argue that when Hisuian Electric comes, though, it's going to take any niche that Rotom had and throw it out the gutter. Truthfully, I think the C tier might even be an over tiering to just due to Fisher BTSD, to be completely honest. And if someone pointed it out, honestly, I wouldn't fight him on it. I do think that Rotom Mo just still have some cool things over Electrode, though. The Nasty Plot is kind of cool. And also, I think this is a better Terra Fire user. Uh, Electrode, I don't think ever really can Terra outside of maybe. I forgot to mention it when I talked about Electrode, but Ghost honestly also is a pretty good option on it, just to try and get around priority. Uh, but even still, I think as far as just an offensive Pokemon goes, I think that Rotom Mo still probably could, in theory, have it beat. I think the issue being, though, is that for it to actually be more viable than Electrode, in my opinion, it would probably need to get up a Nasty Plot, which is actually a pretty hard job for Rotom to do. Uh, it's still a cool Scarf option, though. Definitely C tier. Lilligan. Uh, honestly, Lilligan is a pretty high B tier. Um, I'm going to put this thing at the top of B for now. I think that really the biggest reason that I'm not putting it in A tier is because of the fact that we do have a better chlorophyll option coming down in the list very shortly. Uh, but regular Lilligan is still pretty good though. Uh, this thing is obviously an amazing follow me user. At least from spamming is great with sleep powder as well. Base 90 speed is pretty good on chlorophyll. The only reason this thing gets a B tier though is because of the fact that his suing Lilligan is just Lilligan but better. Um, truthfully, I'm actually half tempted to put this thing in the S tier. I think that when Hisui and Lilligant comes in the game, uh, well, truthfully, one, when Hisui and Lilligant comes in the game, it also steals with Basque Legion, and I think that Sun and Rain will become monstrous when these two Pokemon end up coming out. Sun is going to be revitalized when Hisui and Lilligant comes in the game, and I think it will actually be the difference between Lilligant being 
kind of a niche option on Sun and being a truly viable one. Uh, assuming Lilligant has a lot of things over regular Lilligant, for one, the fighting typing is huge. On top of the fact as well, this thing has an extra 15 speed over assuming, over uh, not Hisuian, uh, Yudovan Lilligant. To put in perspective, if I run Lilligant with max speed Timid, and I run Hisuian Lilligant with max speed Adamant, Hisuian Lilligant still outpaces Lilligant by one single point, which is pretty incredible. The fact that I can get the damage boost and do even more damage on top of the fact as well that I have a second stab to go for, the fact as well, well, yeah, so so despite the fact that Lilligant has a uh, 110 special attack, the Hisuian Lilligant having 1 of 5 while still being able to go for Adamant does objectively hit better. Uh, that's going to objectively be more valuable because with Adamant and 1 of 5, I'm hitting 172. With Timid, one, uh, one, Timid one, 252, I'm hitting 162. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. Uh, so it's objectively hitting harder on top of having a natural stab built in. Uh, you can still go for something like Tyre Ghost. You really, you can make everything that Lilligan does, but with a second stab option work. And I think it's pretty cool. Definitely an A tier. I'm tempted to put this thing in S tier, but we'll see how the tier list goes. Sawsbuck can get an F tier, but it's going to get higher in the F tier. It's just slightly better coverage. Um, Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that no one's really using Sawsbuck right now, to be completely honest. Because as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure this thing is just a better Leafeon. And I've seen... And it's, I say that saying that I've seen Leafeon usage. Um, I mean, I guess actually neither really has great coverage right now. Um, yeah, I guess neither has great coverage right now, and at least Leafeon has better, better defensive merit. Um, yeah, well, actually, I'll, I'll lower sauce book. We'll, we'll put it right below Leafeon. I think Leafeon's defensive merit actually kind of helps it here. Uh, but both are kind of shit. Definitely still an F tier. It's just another shit chlorophyll user. Mogus has an S plus. Easily one of the best VGC Pokemon of all time. I think, personally, if we're talking historically, I think there's only... I think it's probably around where Lander T and Incineroar are, and I think the only Thundee I just have right now classes it, and I don't even think it's by much. Uh, this would still definitely enter the conversation of probably in the top 5 of all time if we're talking historically speaking, uh, but Amoogus is still probably one of, if not the best Pokemon this generation I would argue. Um, I think really the only, things, the only thing that definitively beats it out is Fluttermane this gen. Uh, and I think that otherwise, for the particular metagame, I think that Thundee Eye probably rivals it, as well as stuff like the Iron Hands. I still think Iron Hands Blanket rivals it, despite the fact that it's not as great this format. I think that depending on how the format evolves, Iron Hands will continue to still be a top tier threat. Uh, stuff like, for example, Ting Lu is also definitely up there. Palafin, uh, actually Palafin I think is just a meta trend. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think that Palafin will continue to be like a top tier. Uh, but I definitely think that really the only Pokemon that's objectively just a better Pokemon than than Amoongus' format, or well, even just this generation, would be Fluttermane. And I think that everything else that's really high tier would be pretty similar. Uh, but it's definitely a really strong option for redirection. It's unrivaled, I would argue, for redirection. Uh, despite the fact that you could throw safety goggles on a team, I still think this is a better redirector than Mousehold, which does ne not have to worry about that at all. Is also faster, has a lot of good support still. I think it's objectively just clears Mousehold, which is a lot because, again, you can run an item to get around Amoongus' uh, redirection. You can't do that for Mouse, though. Um, that's not to say that Mouse is bad by any means. I think that Mouse is still incredible, but it just it does a lot more so about Amoongus, truthfully. Uh, I can go on and on about Amoongus, truthfully, for like its whole own video. Honestly, that might be something I do. If you guys are interested, I might even make that a members thing because I'm trying to think of members stuff to do in between the challenge runs because I'm running out of save files. So... Let me know, members, if you want to see that. Speaking of, your members video is going up today. Uh, probably at like 9 o'clock. Maybe 10. Um, anyway. Chestnut. Chestnut's honestly going to be a D tier. Um, I'm going to put Chestnut actually probably at like the bottom of D tier. Uh, I feel like it's pretty fair. Uh, if I remember, Chestnut does get some cool utility. Obviously, Spiky Shield's cool. We've seen that in Glamora, but that's more so just because it's Glamora. And Glamora's whole benefit is just wearing teens down. And I think it does it a lot better than Chestnut would do, obviously. Um, I guess Leech Seed support is kind of okay on this thing, but it doesn't really get a lot else that would actually be useful outside of, like, Quad Guard. I guess this is, like, if you wanted to roll Compression for some reason, Tropius or Jumpluff into Glamora, I guess. But, like, this thing's typing is a lot worse to do that. Uh, I guess the fact this is a physically defensive option is pretty cool for it because of how physically defensive the format leans. I'd be curious to actually see if something like a Belly Drum and Salic Berry just not popped off in the format at all. I think that might unironically be kind of okay. Uh, the, the issue being is though that unlike with singles, you're not going to keep a sub up as easily to do that. Um, you could still maybe throw some like a Tailwind team. What's this thing? Does this thing at least creep like bundle, like non-booster bundle? Or, uh, actually, no, does it sing at least hit 107? It does at least hit 107. Okay, yeah, this could be kind of a viable charm user, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it D tier. 
um, it's definitely still a weaker D tier. I still do believe that Tropius and Simflora are better options than it in VGC. Uh, but it's it's not terrible. I think it has at least merit. Um, I would be inclined to use this mod at least. Uh, anyway, Gogo. Gogo is unironically a pretty cool option. I can't lie, this thing has stolen my heart. It's a cool Terra Rock user. Um, I found I fell a lot in love with this thing when I used the Luminion team actually. And I think that Gogo genuinely with loaded dice is actually kind of a scary threat. I would love to see this thing pop off in a later series. I don't know if that's going to happen though, because I think that truthfully series two is as kind as you can get to Gogo. Uh, but I've still seen Iron Treads unironically make day two. So who fucking knows? If Iron Treads can do it, Gogo can do it. Because I think Gogo is probably at least, it's a worse mod on paper, I think for sure. But at the same time though, we were in a format last gen where I would arguably put them both in the same tier. Well, not last gen, uh, last series. Why would I put them both in the same tier? So I, I honestly have faith in Gogo. I think it's kind of a cool mod. Definitely a D tier. Serena. Serena gets a C tier. I think this is probably, series three has been the best format we've seen for Serena. I still think it's at the lower end for sure. This generation just has not been kind to Serena. It lost some decent options like Ice Spinner, for, for example, which Ice Spinner was a huge option for Serena. I think it actually made Serena into a really strong offensive threat on those teams that are priority blocking. And while it can obviously still be a good priority blocker, um, while also still being just a valuable team option, it just has a lot less coverage. Um, it's not to say it's bad. I mean, realistically, stuff like uh, probably you'd most likely go for like Trop Kick, High Jump Kick, Low Kick, or not High Jump Kick, uh, probably like Trop Kick, Low Kick, Playoff, and U-Turn on like an Assault Vest set. And I think it's probably as good as it gets. Uh, you can maybe consider like a Zen Habit as well for like Amoongus and stuff, because uh, Amoongus is one of the best options right now. But again, that's probably as good as you get right now. I, Serena's definitely not that great for it right now, and truthfully, I think that really the biggest reason that Serena has merit is because of how good Pelican is. Uh, but the second that Pelican falls off, which I do think eventually will happen, um, I think a Pelican will fall off once the home decks comes in, then Serena will therefore also fall off, because uh, it's not really great into stuff like Dragonite, which can just still go for Outrage and Massacre Serena anyway. Uh, so it's definitely a C tier for sure. This is why uh, this gets a D tier. I have mentioned my thoughts on this is why in the ghost type tier list, but this is automatically an okay dozo check. Uh, it has some cool niche and tailwind. I think this could have some merit as a special breaker for tailwind as well as just being a good offensive grass type. Um, overall though, it's not a great option. I think it's stuff like some floor is a little more consistent for team speed control on chicken builds. I think that as well for special grasses, we even have some better options in our higher tiers with stuff like a bomb snow, electro to suing, etc. Uh, but it's an okay option for sure. It's definitely a D tier mon in my opinion. Hisui and Desidui, uh, I think I put this thing in the C tier for fighting, and I do agree with that. Uh, Hisui and Desidui actually could be kind of cool. Um, it's definitely going to get the bottom, in my opinion. But with stuff like Scrappy, as well as the fact this is an okay speed tier, and on top of that as well, the triple kick move is actually pretty viable with the fact that you can drop defenses, you have the high crit ratio, as well as the chance to flinch could be pretty decent. Um, as far as other physical options go, uh, this thing doesn't have a lot, but one of the biggest benefits this does have is Trailblaze. Now, I do think that Trailblaze specifically on like a Tailwind build, and you throw on like Trailblaze, Triple Kick, Sword Stance, and then probably like Knock Off, or maybe like a Shadow Claw, or actually no, you probably don't need Shadow Claw, probably like a Sucker Punch, truthfully, could be good. And I think that could actually be a kind of viable mod. Uh, it's not going to be like some meta savior or anything, but it's it's good enough. I think it's at least better than like a Chestnut. Uh, we'll give this thing like a C tier. I've come around on this one for sure. I think it's definitely not that terrible. Laurentis. Uh, Laurentis is kind of okay. Uh, this thing will get the bottom of our D tier. Actually, right above Chestnut. Um, and actually, right above Distant Joy, too. Uh, if nothing else, the Trick and Benefit is pretty cool for this. Contra at least Storm is good. I will say that one thing that does hurt Laurentis a lot is the loss of superpower. Uh, superpower being lost in this mod fucking sucks. It's the reason that I don't put this thing in C tier, truthfully. Because I do think that Laurentis would have had a niche actually in this generation and several points in this format if it had superpower. Uh, but overall, it's still an okay Terra option. Like a Terra Ice set with like Leaf Storm and then going for like Terra Blast, uh, Leaf Storm, Protect, and then. Uh, you'd probably go with like Palm Buff to be honest, or maybe, I don't know, does this thing get some good status options still this gen? Um, not really. Yeah, you'd probably go with Palm Buff to be honest, or maybe Worry Seed could be kind of okay. Uh, and you could make this thing kind of work. I think it's a best, like an okay trick room option. Maybe Terra Fairy could work as well. Uh, but overall, definitely a T tier. Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom, if this was last generation, would have been an S plus. I would have even put it over Amoongus. Uh, now I'm giving this thing an A tier, and I'm actually putting it even below Hisui and Lilligan. Uh, that's not to say that Rillaboom can't go back up, but current Rillaboom sucks. Rillaboom lost a few things that actually were pretty valuable for it. And the biggest one, though, by far, 
Uh, well, for one, high horsepower was definitely a bit of a loss. This means that obviously with grassy terrain, your best option is that stomping tantrum, which is a little bit lower base power. It kind of sucks. It's not really a huge nerf though. The big one though is objectively speaking going to be grassy glide. Uh, grassy glide being gone really is a terrible option for early boom actually, because it means that you're now relying on either wood hammer or drum beating. I would definitely go drum beating, by the way. I believe we actually saw some use in this in the pre Isle of Armor metagame, actually, with Rillaboom doing it okay in like a format or two with drum beating. Uh, but it's some good speed control on Rillaboom. It's not to say it's terrible. I think we'll still see actually a Solvus Rillaboom pop off with like uh, probably drum beating, drain punch, and then uh, yeah, probably drain, drum beating, drain punch, knock off, and U turn could be decent. You could also go with Trailblaze in the inverse, but I do think a drum beating will probably be a little bit better. Uh, just because of the higher base power damage, truthfully. But the point being is that I do think that Rillaboom, sadly, just, it's unfortunately kind of a victim of the DLC moves being cut. Uh, just like with Serena, where this thing would have been a really strong option in this format if it was not for the fact that those DLC moves were cut. Uh, so it's definitely going to get an A tier. If the DLC moves come back, this objective goes to S+, plus, and I would probably put it even above Amoongus, truthfully, because I think this thing is a gross terror user. But without the priority option as well, this thing does hurt significantly. Because uh, the priority option could have been, like, the difference between this thing being a genuine, really strong Palafin check, and this thing being an okay mon that happens to do some damage to Palafin, but Palafin could still go for Terra Water, Mystic Water, Wave Crash, and just probably do around 80, and just nuke you before you get damage off. Uh, so it's definitely going to be an A tier for sure. Flapple kind of sucks. This thing at least is also low, so it's F tier. Uh, this one can get a D tier, at least for the fact this is kind of a dozo check. Um, I figured where I actually put Flapple in the previous tier list, but wherever I did, it was probably too high. Um, this thing, if nothing else, though, with Apple Acid could actually be a decent dozer check. Uh, you maybe want to go for, like, a Terra Grass or, like, a Terra Fairy set just to stop order up from being super effective on you. And in Fairy's case, I guess, just giving you the immunity. Uh, but it's definitely a really strong option. I think Appleton actually is unironically underexplored, if that... That feels weird to say, but I do still believe it. Uh, it's kind of an okay Trick Room Grass, definite D tier. Calyrex fucking sucks. This is the worst grass that we have. The only reason that Calyrex is good is because of the other forms, F tier. Zerud, I unironically think this is a good format for Zerud. Uh, this thing gets a lot going for it. The 105 speed is amazing. I think that Zerud could unironically be a good option on like a Talon Tusk team, for example, as a really good check to Pelican. Uh, you obviously get some good options like Trailblaze, for example. You could probably go for like Sword Sands Trailblaze uh, and then go for like uh, probably, I don't know, what's your best option for Dark? It's I think it's Throat Chop now. Uh, throat Chop would be decent, yeah, because you could, uh, no, actually, hold on. Does this thing even get Throat Chop? Uh, it does not. Your best option would be Crunch. Uh, so Sword Dance, Crunch, Trailblaze, and then probably, uh, you'd probably go with like Drain Punch, Close Combat, etc. Uh, it's an okay option. Uh, Rock Slide's also pretty decent for like Talon matchup. Uh, you could maybe even actually just go for Terra Rock on this thing, to be completely honest. It could be an okay abuser of that. Uh, I'm going to give this thing a low A tier. I think it's a rude has mare i'm curious to see where it goes in this format it could be a decent stall breaker as well this thing might have gotten like a top of a tier low s tier if it wasn't for the fact that it did lose darkest lariat which is actually such a huge nerf for this meta because if it was not for the darkest lariat loss this thing could have been a phenomenal dozo check and i think you could have definitely seen like a terra dark set with darkest lariat sword stance trailblaze and filler and you could have really seen this mod unironically do work in this format on Tailwind. Because he could have been a really genuine, like, meta savior pick for Tailwind. Uh, this thing does gain Tailwind on uh, Darkest Lariat back. This objectively goes to S tier, I think. Uh, but this is probably the best format that Zerud will ever get in the history of its time in competitive. Both past, present, and even in the future, I would argue. But it's objectively a strong option still. I think it's uh, still not positive. But sadly, Dozo existing puts this thing from S to A tier. Uh, Miascarada. I think if we were to do a regulation C tier list, this thing would get like an A tier or a B tier. I think since we're doing a general grass tier list, this thing gets like a high A tier, maybe even considerable for us. Um, yes, Karada, if nothing else, has a pretty good job as far as the speed tier goes, being a 122 or 123 speed tier option. Uh, the fact this thing as well has some good priority, so like Sucker Punch is pretty valuable. Uh, it has some cool utility, a lot of great coverage. You could make this thing work with like a Bandit set. Uh, we've seen some Man of Mask Rod actually be pretty scary in Series 2. If nothing else, I do think this mod still is kind of okay. I think this is just kind of an unkind format for it, and we'll kind of see this thing pop off in later series. It's definitely still not going to be some meta top pick like it was in Series 1, though. I think it was objectively like a one thing deal. But I do think we'll still see some more Miyasu Karada usage down the pipeline. It's definitely an A tier in my opinion. Uh, our Believe is definitely a C tier pick. I would put this thing right up right below Serena. It's a cool Trick Room Grass. Uh, C Tower is an incredible ability. This thing has some incredible terror with stuff like Fairy, Rock, Ground, etc. Uh, Rock especially is great for stuff like Torkoal matchups as well as opposing Flying types to gain resistance to stuff like Talonflame that might break Brood you. 
Uh, you still have Gleam, which can massacre stuff like Roaring Moon and other top tier darks for the most part, outside of like King Gambit. Uh, Terra Fire is still really good on Sun teams. Uh, you have a lot going for this thing. I think it's really strong, but only with Terra, which is why I'm putting it in C tier. If this thing had, if this thing honestly just had slightly better physical bulk or like wasn't a normal type to start, I might have considered even putting this thing in the B tier. Uh, but there are, I guess, uh, actually the normal type's not terrible. It's a good check for Fluttermane. Yeah, realistically, if it wasn't for the fact this thing is just so Terra dependent, I would probably give this thing like a, a B tier, but yeah, it, it's so tired of pendant. Uh, Scovillain. Scovillain's kind of cool, but like it's so fucking niche. Um, oh, I accidentally hit F12. Uh, this thing definitely gets a solid D tier, um, but it's going to get like right below Sun Flora because I think of something else that Scovillain's too slow for the Chlorophyll Sun, and Sun Flora at least can make Solar Power Sun kind of work. Uh, so yeah, Scovillain will get a D tier. If this thing at least outpaced like Booster Bundle, that'd be a different story, but it doesn't. I don't even think it outpaces like Modest Booster Flood. Well, uh, not modest, uh, like a booster speed Fluttermane that's creeping like Roaring Moon. So, yeah, it's objectively like a D tier. Um, Bramble. Bramble's also a D tier. Uh, this thing with Windrider is kind of okay. It's a niche mon. It's one of those things where, like, when you let Bramble pop off, it will pop off. But you do kind of need to position your entire game plan around doing so. And even still, it's pretty easy to check. Uh, it's definitely a D tier for sure. There's a lot of Sucker Punch going around right now without the use of Armors and DD. I think you arguably had a better chance of making Bramble work in Regulation B than in Regulation C. But that's mostly just due to the fact that size spam existed at least as a good option to stop priority. Otherwise, though, yeah, Bramble kind of sucks. It's whatever. Uh, Brew Bonnet. Brew Bonnet's definitely an A tier as well. I would put this thing right above Rilla Boom, to be completely honest. This is a good redirector. I think, truthfully, the biggest nerf against Brew Bonnet is the fact that Brew Bonnet is just competing for an Amoongus slot. It has some good niche as well, with stuff like Bullet Seed doing a lot more damage than Bonnet would do. And it's a great user of loaded dice, actually. It's probably one of, if not the best, loaded dice users in the format. I would argue only Bax has a chance at taking that slot. The difference being, though, is that Bax has opted actually to become just a really strong AV mon. And I do think it's objectively a better AV mon than a loaded dice mon. So Bonnet might be the best loaded dice user right now. Or at least the best common one, I should say. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's a strong option. I do think a Bonnet unironically is a kind of cool mon. Uh, it's pretty strong and competitive. It's definitely an A tier for sure. Iron Leaves. Uh, Iron Leaves is interesting. I'm pretty torn on where I want to put Iron Leaves. If we are doing Walking Wake on like the Dragon Tears, that would have objectively gotten like an S, maybe even an S plus to be completely honest. But Iron Leaves is a little bit different. I don't think this thing is like walking awake in the sense where you just throw this on any weather it'd be viable or throw this on like any sort of tailwind arc type and be viable it's still not bad and i think this thing does have a place at clearing certain matchups like great tusk for example for tailwind which is kind of cool uh but i do think it's subjectively just a top tier bmon i think it's at least like very top of b it's strong option uh side, side blade is objectively like a really strong move and this thing can take advantage of both psychic and electric drain which is pretty cool uh yeah no i i think this is a really good mon do I think this is a, like an A tier? Not really. Uh, the typing's kind of shit for Terra, but this is an amazing Terra user. I think this will definitely see users just like Terra fighting, or even like a Terra, not Terra Steel. It's definitely gonna be Terra fighting, maybe even fire. Uh, but this will definitely just, similar to I believe it, it's just kind of held back by the fact that you have to Terra to be viable in most matchups. Um, but it's objectively still really strong, and you can definitely make strategies work with it, in my opinion. Wo Qian. Uh, Wo Qian's kind of cool. I think this is definitely an S tier. It's definitely above Arceus. This thing is able to literally 1v4 teams, which is fucking insane. It's honestly probably the only mon in the current format that can do that. Uh, Ting Lu might be able to have a case for that, but I think Wo Qian does it better. Uh, sadly though, it's also a kind of hard mon to bring to games. It's one of those things where it has a really low floor to where you would, you can, well no no no, no it has a high floor and a high ceiling. You kind of need to know what you're doing to make this mod work, otherwise it's really shit, and you're going to be using this as like a really, it's just a sack piece if you don't know how to really particularly play a long game. But for those who can play a really patient long game, I think it's objectively a really strong mod. I think it's definitely an S tier for sure. I think it borders S plus, but I don't think it's Moongus level. And I, I think especially the fact that people are can, calling the, uh, they're calling Wochi and the new top of Bulu speaks a lot about how good it is, because Bulu was objectively really strong mod in Generation 7. However, it's just really hard to justify a team slot too. And I think Wochian faces a similar issue where it's a really strong mon, but you do kind of need to give up a team slot for it in most cases, unless you're building a stall. Uh, so it's objectively an S tier. 
Finally, we have Toad Scroll. Uh, Toad Scroll is kind of good. I think it's an okay option as far as like D tiers go. If we're specifically talking about like the merit that Toad Scroll provides versus like a format specific thing, I think it at least slots above like Chestnut. Uh, it's okay with Trick Room and it has some decent support options. Its bulk is okay. And despite the fact that typically people are going to be going for, oh, you know, what about Mycelium Might? Uh, well, that doesn't really matter when you get Trick Room up uh, because the fact that, oh, I don't know, mind. Uh, yeah, this would always be the last party bucket, so it doesn't matter. Um, but it, it does at least give credence to Trick Room because of the fact that you're going last anyway, which why not just click Trick Room at that point? And it still gets some cool options like Spore, uh, T Spikes, Taunt, etc. Uh, you could definitely make this thing work. I think it's automatically not terrible, but uh, yeah, it's it's not great. It's not great by any means. But it, its bulk is good enough and it has some good coverage. We'll give it a D tier. So that's going to be my tier list though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and if you did, leave a like below and subscribe for more content and answer the comment question of the day. Uh, what is your favorite grass type to use in competitive? With that said, shoutouts to our channel members of course being Josh K Ultra Player, Mia, Zeke Zero, Matt O'Shea, B-Bat, Fonzie, Anna Dupur, Timo Mueller. Um, then we also have, oh my god, sorry, my channel members thing won't load, but Bambi, uh, Vral Plays, Obo, and Johannes B. Thank you guys so much for your support on the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me know as well, channel members. Uh, do you guys want to see the individual Pokemon breakdowns on the channel? I'll try and bring those in between. Uh, or just let me know if you're a channel member watching this. Let me know what kind of content that you guys want to see in between the battle challenges. Because I still want to do two channel member videos a month. But one, those, those battle challenges are really fucking daunting. I can't lie. It is hard to get up more than one in a month. Because they just take so much planning for the teams. And it's also really hard. And I got kind of bailed this month's challenge. was easy. But truthfully, a lot of these are still really hard. And on top of it as well. It, I just, I'm running out of save files to make it work to not just start from like a rank three Pokeball or something. So let me know your guys' thoughts down below on that as well. Um, but with that said, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, peace out guys.